Now, of course, this next branch is near and dear to me. Uh, I never dare shake these people's hands because it always hurts. Uh -huh. We have, uh, where are my Marines? That's right. We got the Marines in the house. Who are up, baby? Stand up. There we go. branch right here. Where are our Navy? Where is the Navy at? Please stand up and be recognized. Yes, lots of Navy today. Give it up for our Navy. <laughs> Next branch right over here. Of course, I always thought, uh, you know, if I was going to enlist, I was going to choose to go into this branch right over here. I always thought I was the coolest growing up. My dad was always mad at me for it. But we got the Air Force right over here. We're in my Air Force danger zone time. That's right. Here we go. Good up for our Air Force. Now our next one is a very near and dear, uh, close one to us in the cruising industry. They were actually just here two days ago. Maybe you heard of my, my announcement. I'm not sure if you guys were, could hear it from the terminal building or not, but they were just here two days ago. They have the power to detain the ship or even put a no sail order on a ship. So we gotta make sure we're always keeping them happy. For some reason, they don't like the cruise either. I think because they know too much, actually. <laughs> but do we have any Coast Guard here? Any Coast Guard out there? Like I said, they don't like to cruise. No, like I told you. <laughs> they sing too much of what we're doing here. <laughs> no, but we're gonna go ahead. We gotta, we gotta make some noise for our Coast Guard as well. We got the song, we're so sick and still. Give it up for our Coast Guard friends. Again, look, you're sailing on board, which means we passed, so there you go. 
I don't know why they didn't want to cruise with us though, but that's okay, that's all right. Oh, let me just check on this. Let's we'll see if this is the captain of the Coast Guard calling. No, it's okay, it's just, <laughs> just my mama, that's all right. <laughs> all right, we're gonna keep it going now. Are we done? Did we do all the branches? No, we ain't done yet. I'm proud to say I've met so far while doing this presentation two individuals from this branch. I would love to meet another one. Do we have the Space Force in the house? That's right, do we got the Space Force? Right, not yet, but how a round of applause for the Space Force. Now I'm not gonna lie, when, when this first came out, I was like, what aren't they telling us? Okay, because first of all, I know y'all got your secrets. Okay, you like your secrets, my dad got secrets. I, got, I, I learned one of them. <laughs> but no, y'all be keeping those secrets. Now, Space Force, right? I get at the same time I wanna meet them, but maybe I don't wanna meet them. Cause at the same time, if we see them go into action, I don't, I think it's over with, oh, I think at that point. Let's just talk about it. <laughs> there's no, there's no point. <laughs> but if you do meet a Space Force, definitely, uh, you know, <laughs> all hats out to them. But one more time, give it up for the Space Force out there. I know the Coast Guard likes the Space Force as well, because now there's another branch we can all pick on. That's right. <laughs> Now let's keep it going, y'all. Of course, let's make some noise as well for our United States Public Health Service. We have our National Oce Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. Say that three times fast. And then we also got our other uniformed service members. Let me see who's protecting us here in our neighborhoods. Do we have any uh, police, firefighters, EMTs, first responders? Please stand up and be recognized. Everyone's still keeping us safe right there in our backyards. Keeping us safe, healthy, and protected. Thank you, each and every one of you. Then, of course, let's keep it going. I mean, not part of the military, but kind of actually they're in the military as well. But I want to recognize these individuals everywhere I go, period. Because without them, we wouldn't be here actually on this cruise ship too. Where are my nurses at? Where are the nurses? Please stand up and be recognized. We're helping us be that pandemic. We got our medical teams in the military as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your services as well for us. Now, our next uh, individuals I want to recognize, maybe they didn't think they were going to get recognized, but they being recognized. All right, now, of course, when you went off uh, across the pond or wherever you went um, during those conflicts, during these war times, during these battles, right? What were we fighting for out there? What, were we, what else were you fighting for? Freedom. Here. Freedom, our liberties. What else, though? The, the family as well. You need a home to go back to, right? Who was there raising the kids, single parents, all uh, just, you know, having a home to come back to, food to come back to on the table for you when you're coming back. It is not hard, I mean, it's not hard, it is very hard being in a military family, right? It's not easy being in a military family. It, it's not for everyone, all right? Sometimes it can divide people, all right? I mean, my, my, my parents are separated uh, from it as well. So again, I think you should be, our military here should be applauding their spouses and their children for even being there for when they came back. So how about our spouses, our children, how about you stand up and how about we thank them for their services at home? Thank you for giving them that, that emotional support, all right? You already know we're gonna talk about that later on, right? It's a mental battle as well, okay? And it's not for everyone. PTSD is real. And again, uh, for, those, for these spouses to go through that, to be by your side, again, I think deserves another big round of applause out there. Again, these amazing individuals. Now, let's keep it going. Do we have any inter international allies out there as well? We had one uh, last week, which was super awesome. Anybody from across the pond, anybody else? But if not, let's all, let's still, let's still uh, cheer for our brothers and sisters from all over that support us. So when, time, when time comes, we've got their back, they've got ours as well, right? And now I wanna go ahead and honor our veterans at this time. Right now, this is gonna be, it could be an emotional time as well. But you know we have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, I would love to recognize these individuals, uh, talk over some conflicts, some wars that we all know. But of course, <laughs> but of course, um, you know if you if you see them stand up, recognize them, hoot and holler, cheer for them all. These individuals are very special to me. So far, I've met only three of them in my career um, on ships. I would love to meet another one. Normally, we get an email if they if they're ever cruising with us because we just give them the keys to the bridge. You know, we just we just roll out everything for them. But do we have any of uh, World War II vets in the lounge? Any World War II vets? Yeah, there's not, there's not many left, y'all. We got about maybe, I think, under 200 American World War II vets still out there. So, you know, it's, it's been a while. But please, give them a big round of applause to all those World War II vets out there. Maybe you got one in your family, maybe you have one in your family, right? 
uh, some honorable other awards I want to uh, give out some shout outs to. Do we have any uh, Korean War vets? I met a few of them as well, but they're also, you know, in low numbers as well. Give it up for the Korean War vets. Now, I know these individuals are here. I've met a few of them already, and they didn't get the welcome home that they deserved, and they should have got it. But can we give them to them now? Where are my Nam vets? My Vietnam vets stand up be recognized. The things that were said and done to you were just not fair and not right, okay? And again, you went out there for us. You still had America on your mind. And again, your family is in mind as well, right? So again, from each, uh, to each and every one of you, thank you for your service. And on top of that, for our non-vets, I do something different as well. How about our non-vets, you stay seated, and how about everyone else give them that standing ovation they should have got when they came home? How about that? Another big thank you for your service. Now let's keep it going with some uh, other recent ones. Do we have anybody who, uh, who fought in Afghanistan? Anybody who fought in Afghanistan? Please stand up, be recognized. There we go. <laughs> Afghanistan. How about anybody out of the Desert Storm? Anybody with Desert Storm? Stand up, be recognized. Some still standing, I love it. And thank you so much for your service. How about Operation Iraqi Freedom? Operation Iraqi Freedom? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Now, of course, I know there's other conflicts and battles, and I encourage you all to speak it out, too. Any other uh, shout-outs or honorable mentions you want to give out, anything you want to recognize, we're going to have our open forum at the end of the presentation. That's when we'll give you the mic, and just go ahead and give out any other shout-outs you wish uh, to add on. Of course, there's a lot of history. we got a lot of history out there, so we'll, let, we'll open the floor to everyone as well for that. Now, for these other individuals, I would love to recognize them now, because as you saw, um, you know, they're not with us right here, but they're always with us in our hearts. Uh, the, the men and women that paid the ultimate sacrifice for our liberties, our freedoms, and they shall give them that respect and a big moment of silence for those brave individuals that paid the ultimate sacrifice, the gone but not forgotten. That, that could be an emotional one for a lot of us. So how about we lighten the mood? Can we give a big round of applause to them upstairs? <laughs> now I'm also uh, very honored and happy to say we actually have a special message from the president that wanted to speak in our military appreciation uh, uh, show. So we actually have a video from the president. I'll love to play for you guys right now. Uh, the president of Carnival, I should, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> Gotcha. Hi, I'm Christine Duffy, president of Carnival Cruise Line, and I would like to thank you not only for cruising with us, but for attending this special tribute we've put together to honor those who have served or are currently serving in our military. Military service is very near and dear to me personally, as my father and all of my uncles served in the U.S. Armed Forces. My dad was in the Army, and my three uncles served in the U.S. Air Force, Navy, and Marines. My stepfather was a Green Beret. And now, our son Sean, who I'm so proud of, is currently in law school and planning to join the service as a JAG when he graduates. 
which he has I done. He's at Fort Bragg right now. I have the honor and dedication of military men and women and the sacrifices made by their families. And I am humbled by those who are willing to give so much to preserve and protect our freedoms. At Carnival Cruise Line, we have been a big supporter of military families. And I am very proud to say that we carry more active and retired military personnel than any other cruise line in the world. My first official event as president of Carnival was in February of 2015, where I had the opportunity to be in Galveston, Texas to commemorate the start of cruises on Carnival Freedom. During this special celebration featuring country music star Martina McBride, we kicked off our partnership with Operation Homefront. This partnership has endured and we have continued to provide charitable support to Operation Homefront. Their mission is to build strong, stable, and secure military families so they can thrive in the communities they have worked so hard to protect for us. With more than 3,200 volunteers nationwide, Operation Homefront provides assistance to military families through food and housing, as well as a variety of financial aid services. With Operation Homefront and country music superstar Carrie Underwood, we introduced our Honor Family Fund program. This was a year long program that not only raised funds for Operation Homefront, but we were able to give many military families the opportunity to sail with us on Carnival Vista and attend Carrie's concerts. We also chose Deshauna Barber as the godmother of Carnival Vista. Deshauna is the first active duty U.S. military officer to wear the Miss USA crown. I had the privilege of spending time with Deshauna during the naming ceremony in New York, and she is truly an extraordinary young woman. During the ceremony, she spoke about her time in the military, the importance of supporting our servicemen and women, and how important it is to spend time with our loved ones. Let's take a look. I am humbled and proud and honored and inspired all at the same time. As a daughter of a retired Master Sergeant who served in U.S. Special Forces, I know what it's like to have a parent in the military. I serve as a commander right now, and it has its ups and downs. I have soldiers that I need to take care of, and that's why when I won Miss USA, I made my platform PTSD care and PTSD awareness and providing PTSD resources for our soldiers. What we do as military is very important. And when the days get hard, you have to think about days like this where you have organizations like Carnival Cruise Line and Operation Homefront that do what they need to do to appreciate our soldiers and the sacrifices that they have made and their families have made. I hope all of you have enjoyed this special event today as much as we at Carnival enjoy honoring you for your service. We thank you for spending your vacation with us, and on behalf of the entire Carnival family, we hope you and your loved ones had an extraordinary time here on your Carnival cruise, because you deserve it. Thank you. There you go, get up for the president of Carnival. Now, folks, like I said, this is my favorite part of our presentation. Where we're going to go ahead and get to our open forum right now. And this is that time where, again, uh, there's so much, so many things we can discuss, so many things we can honor and praise. And that's when I open it up to uh, to you, to the floor. I've got Shelly here, part of our fun squad. She's going to go around with a microphone. Uh, if there's anything you want to discuss, any tips, advice, honorable mention, shout outs, uh, just raise your hands and we'll get the party started, right? So if you have uh, anything you want to just recognize, we have one over here. And we'll get the ball rolling. So I just want to say, um, for those who still serve, such as myself, uh, we have Operation Enduring Freedom still happening. Um, so I've participated overseas in that already. I'm going over again in a few months. So for those that are still serving, thank you. I look forward to still serving with you guys. Thank you so much. 
Let's take a moment to, uh, to honor and recognize our active members as well right now, right? Do we have any active stand up and be recognized if you have been uh, actively serving? There we go. Thank you for choosing us and cruising uh, with us here on the glory to, for your well-deserved vacation. Thank you to each and every one of our active members out there, right? Choosing to enlist and choosing to be there to protect us. We know, uh, you know, talking about these different conflicts, right? I mean, the purpose of military is not to go to war, right? It's to prevent war. So thank you for, for keeping the peace. And right now, you know, it's not, it's not looking so peaceful out there. That's for sure. So there are some battles that may have to happen and we don't, you know, we're not looking forward to that. But again, thank you for keeping the peace what you can do right now and putting your lives on, on the line for all of us here. So again, one more time, a big round of applause for our active members. Uh, anybody else right over here? I'm the proud father of two retired military and also retired military myself. And I'm proud to say that my family has had somebody on active duty since 1931, up to and including today. And I, I want to give a shout out because I noticed my family is not the only one. Thank you, yes. Some over here, Sean. Good morning, my name is Jason. Uh, the question came to me is, uh, you know, I, I appreciate what Carnival's doing. Have you guys ever thought about a military discount? <laughs> yes. They are, they are, they are getting the works of that as well, actually. I thought there already was one, but they were talking about a bigger one. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, there is a military discount, but they're talking about actually increasing it as well. So that's in the works, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was in the Navy uh, during Vietnam. Uh, I actually come from a military family. My dad was in the Navy also. He was in uh, over close to Japan. I don't know exactly where he was, but they were in the... Uh, hottest part of World War II. Uh, my father-in-law was in the Battle of the Bulge, if you've heard of that. He actually got frostbite, but back then they didn't take him out of action, you know. He he kept fighting until uh, we beat Germany. And uh, my son was in the uh, Marines, and he was in, uh, in Kuwait. <laughs> I forget there were so many over there at that time, but I just want to thank everybody for their service. And uh, I, I'm proud of uh, my family for uh, everything they've done for this country. Thank you, thank you for your service. Good morning, 26 years Air Force, retired. I wanted to say that uh, we're in Military City, USA, San, we're from San Antonio. So our brothers are the ones we served with. Those are the ones we call for help us move, help us cut a tree, more than we call our regular family. We're the ones, the ones we go and uh, have a beer with, they have problems. Uh, we don't judge each other. Uh, like, you know, civilians kind of judge us. They think that we're strict parents and we, we make our kids make their bed and get haircuts, and, and we do do that. <laughs> because we want to produce great people, you know, as well. And I tell you what, there's no greater feeling in the world than when your son, our son, uh, gets commissioned. So, uh, what do we do? I went on a six month diet, bought a man girl, squeezed all this greatness back in my service dress, Gave him his first salute and paid his wings on. There you go. Thank you. Excuse me for blubbering, but I want to honor all of you. I'm honoring my late husband. He didn't see any action. 
he was in military police during <laughs> Vietnam and he was in Germany. I want to thank my uncles, my cousins, and all of you here for making this a safe place. God, I love you all. Thank you so much. I wish you were here to say thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing. So I'm actually an AGR in the Kentucky National Guard. So I just kind of wanted to give a shout out to any fellow guardsmen in here. Uh, I've spent some time overseas, I've done all that, but I've never been more proud than seeing soldiers really helping people back home. Recently in Kentucky, we had some pretty severe flooding. If anybody saw that on the news. So seeing uh, men and women in uniform legitimately saving lives stateside, it's just something I'm real proud of. So any fellow guardsmen out here, just want to give y'all a shout out. Here we go. Thank you. We have Pauline over here. Good morning. Pauline Fulcher from Columbia, Mississippi. I'm here with my husband, James, who is in the Navy. We're all here today because you either served or you're with someone you love, or like this lady, you're remembering somebody that was dear to you. We all have pictures on our walls. In our home, we have a wall with my husband's grandfather, World War I, his father, World War II, granddad's casket flag, Mr. James Vietnam, and his son, Desert Storm. I had a son that was in the Navy. I had a, a cousin who was an Air Force test pilot in the 1940s. We all have somebody that's close to us. And every day, in some way, we pray, we give thanks for those people for helping to keep our freedom. What I want you to think about today are those people who did not come home and the ones that did come home, but they did not have anybody there waiting for them. There wasn't anybody at the plane. There wasn't anybody at the ship. There wasn't anybody at the bus that they could get off and hug. I want you to remember those people who did come home, but because of war because of whatever happened they were never able to get back into society and live a normal life so today tonight however you pray however you give thanks think of those people that do not have their picture on somebody's wall thank you Hi, my name is Brady, you know, uh, U.S. Air Force. I just wanted to remember two good friends, uh, Dan Schoen and Brad Page. Never forgotten. Thank you. Knees to chest, Shelly, come on. <laughs> Hello, Christian, hi again. Hey there. Um, you know, when we go to do our duties, we have people be around us that's helped us. And I'd like to have a shout out to our translators and our speakers who give us the intelligence that we need to do our job. And normally, we leave them behind. So from the Philippine uh, scouts during World War II to Vietnam to Afghanistan, let's give them a big shout out. Thank you so much. Target Sergeant First Class Golder, if you haven't uh, thought about joining the VFW, please think about it when you get home. Uh, new generation in the VFW. I just joined, uh, always thinking it was the old guys and kind of sat around a bar table, which is Still true, it's the honor guys at the party. <laughs> um, if you haven't heard, we recently got approved the uh, PACT Act, so burn pits, uh, additional medical services, and, and obligations that I feel the country still owes us. And so we fight very hard for that. And uh, you know, our mission is giving back to the comrades that served overseas with us. 
So it's vets fighting for vets. But if you haven't thought about it, please join the VFW in your home. Thank you. Thank you for coming. WAX, Women in Army Corps. And uh, one of the things that I experienced during my service as active and reserve is racism. And I just want to remind everybody today, one of the things we could take forward is diversity and inclusion because I still have uh, friends and relatives in the service and it's still there. And that's one of the things that as minority people have experienced, but it's not brought up to the front. So if y'all know anybody, you know, we all bleed red and we all let to do our duty. I think that's one of the things we need to recognize and change. Thank you. Thank you. Questions wrong yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want to say is that a lot of us know somebody, or some of us, like me, I have PTSD and bipolar disorder. Uh, mental health for us is a big issue because where it's not shown the damage on the outside, people don't see how damaged we are on the inside. And I think if we release the stigma and talk to somebody, especially our spouses sometimes, it could help. So if you ever have problems, just find somebody to talk to. Even if it's through text, anyway, just talk. Talk about it because people don't know why you're angry. People don't understand why something that they did or something that you heard frustrates you. It, I followed the police on the road for about five miles because he didn't put his blinker on when he turned. I high beamed another police because he had his high beams on and that was wrong. I shouldn't have done any of those things, but I did. But, you know, it's just the mentality of what right looks like and knowing what right looks like, it gets to me when people don't do right. So I reach out when I'm going through problems. And my wife right here, she'll tell you sometimes I have some issues. I'm not allowed to ride with my gun. <laughs> I don't like that, but I'm not allowed to ride with my gun. I can ride with it to the gun range, but not out the house. <laughs> but I have road rage issues. I'm sorry. But yeah, if you having some type of question in your mind, you're depressed, you're sad, you can feel yourself sitting there crying and laughing at the same time and not knowing what's going on, what's wrong with you reach out to somebody. Nothing is wrong with talking to somebody about your problems. And it's not weak. Me as a black man growing up, uh, I was told kind of like, you know, if you seek mental health help, it's a weakness. And it's really not a weakness. And we have to break that. Not just with black men, all men. Some women, women talk more than men. <laughs> men, we hold, we hold, we hold a lot in. Like, you know, we can't let our wife see us weak. We gotta be strong. Mm -hmm. But you know, especially with your wife, that's the one person you should really, really talk to. That's the one that's gonna hold your hand. That's gonna pat your back. You know, if you do got a ponytail, hold it back so you can, you know, vomit because you drank too much. <laughs> to but you know, that's 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 that lady. That's that one woman. That's that person that gonna tell you, hey, you know, maybe you shouldn't do this or that. And then later on, after you already do it, you say, you was right. But, you know, just talk, talk, get it out, say the words. That's all I'm about to say. Thank you, Antoine. There you go. Got a couple more right here, right here. First, I would like to give uh, honor to God. And um, secondly, 
uh, in memory of my dad, Carl White, that was a World War II vet and also a Korean vet. And then lastly, I would like to give uh, honor to my husband, a Marine vet. And honey, I want to let you know that I'm honored and I'm pleased to be your wife. And if there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. I want you to know that I'm by your side all the way. And I love you. Thank you. Take a baby and watch him grow and then send them off to war. It's really hard. Was, I think there was one. Oh, we got one over there, one over there, and one over here. <laughs> Sergeant first class. I did a thir 30 years in active duty in uh, National Guard combined. Spent two tours in Vietnam and 14 months in Iraq. And, uh, but right now I'd be in now if they'd let me, but they say I'm too old and too fat, so <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll have to just, uh, but it was a deadly and did a privilege to serve. And, between me and three brothers of mine, we have a total of 87 years in the military. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you. Hello, hello, and thank you all, veterans, for your service. I am the wife of the Gregory Adams. First of all, thank God, because God is all, all over. So and that's the only reason why we're here. So I do honor my husband as well. He's a veteran. He's um, amazing. He's a father of six children. And his plight in the military has, has been very dreadful. But we pull through. Like the man say, you need someone to talk to. And I was there. I was there as much as I could possibly be. I even went to school to learn how to be a counselor. So, and with his claims, I tried to get his, he tried to get his claims for years and he couldn't get them. And then I said, honey, let me just look at your claims. And so I looked at his claims and I said, okay, this is what you didn't do and that and that. And so now 100% total permanent. And I appreciate the way God <laughs> has blessed. And so I just, well, I'm here to say, don't give up. Y'all say the VA don't help you. You're using a word wrong. You're using a word wrong. They help you. If you say in, that's not the word. But you say on, that might be the word. That's how crazy it is. So they help you. And when you become 100%, you're living in heaven. I promise y'all, try it. I've started, he thought that I was so great that he started ha having me to help his friends. I said, I'm not that great. I didn't go to school for this. But now, I've been doing it for now for about 20 years. And so, helping veterans all over the world. So y'all don't give up. Don't give up on your claims. I know probably y'all probably 0%. That is good. 0% is good as well. So thank y'all so much for y'all service. And y'all have a great day. And it's my birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. Now, folks, we do have to start wrapping it up right now. I can take one more. We'll go, you can go ahead right over here. But of course, um, it's 11 o'clock now. We have other activities. We have to, of course, prepare ourselves if you're ready for it. And also, I know uh, you're on vacation and you need to eat every hour on the hour. Oh, yeah. So I don't want you to miss that. So it, a half hour, forgive me. Yes, yeah, so a half hour. So last one right here. And then, of course, we'll let you all talk some of yourselves as well. But I, we will have to, uh, of course, prepare for our next activities. I'd like to say thank you to all of our veterans. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I came back from Vietnam in 1971 and went to work at Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio, Texas, who does a very large percentage 
of improving military weapons and military applications. Let me tell you, we have a little surprise for them when they start shooting off those nuclear weapons. We have a space station in outer space, which China and Russia have been trying to shoot down for several years and can't do it. When they fire off that first nuclear missile, they better hang on to their ass. <laughs> because we only have one commander in chief. That's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Don't ever forget that. Thank you. Nice one to end off on. There you go. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for joining us. Again, like I said, um, you can look to your left, look to your right. This is your military family. This is your carnival family. You're going to be cruising with them for the rest of your lives together. So I encourage you all to speak amongst yourselves. Continue to grow with each other, learn from each other, and thank each and every one of you again for your service. So again, my name is Christian, your food director. We'll see you out and about. Thank you so much for joining us for our military appreciation event. And again, one big round of applause to all of these American heroes, to everyone. To each and every one of you. Thank you so much. You have an amazing afternoon, y'all. We'll see you at 11 o'clock right now at Coffee Shop Pack, the bingo pre-sales, where you can get a free card right over there. And then at 1230, our group for St. Jude event up at the pool. We'll see you.